My parents are proud of me, right? Obvious, champion. <laughs> My mother is a former eighth grade English teacher and she's very judgmental. Don't be so judgmental, mothers. Just love your child, okay? <laughs> Just give him a little hug. She came to my show recently, and I told a very dirty joke. That's what I did. And the joke started like this. I said, recently, me and my girlfriend were <laughs> doggy style. That's how the joke starts. And it gets a lot more dirty after that, but I'm not going to do it. After the show, my mother comes up. She is angry, distraught, embarrassed, a single tears coming down her face. She looks me in the eye, and she says, Michael, that should be my girlfriend and I. <laughs> You're always wet. I'm always wet every day in New York, somehow. Summer, it's humid, I'm walking ass wet, armpits wet. Random air conditioners dripping on you. Was that an air conditioner? I don't know, keep going. Wet, wet, wet. Fall, I put a jacket on, then the sun comes out. Neck wet, head wet, backpack wet. Winter, you put on all these clothes, right? Then you sit in the subway, heat, neck wet, hamstrings wet, feet wet, change my socks, feet wet, change my socks. Spring, raining, raining, wet, bus, puddles, wet. I'm always wet. <laughs> Living in New York is like being Leonardo DiCaprio in every single one of his movies. Let's go through them. What do you want to start with? Titanic drowns to death. Wet. <laughs> Great Gatsby dies in the pool at the end. Wet. Shutter Island, it's an island. Wet. The beach? Wet. <laughs> Give me some. Give me some Leonardo movies. Give me some. Inception, first dream, pouring rain. Wet. Gangs in New York. He's in the whorehouse, sweating the whole time. Wet. Gilbert Grape takes a bath in the second act. Wet. Give me some more. Departed, movie theater scene, wearing a hat, starts raining on him. Wet. <laughs> Revenant, starts in a fucking river. Wet. Great Gatsby, I already said it, it was the second example. What's wrong with this audience? <laughs> he dies in the pool at the end. Pay attention. Wet. Wet. <laughs> Blood Diamond runs into a river, shooting a machine gun. Wet. Aviator crashes into the ocean. Wet. Basketball diaries, top of the building, jerking off, starts raining on him. Wet. <laughs> He's always wet. He is always wet. Tom Cruise always running. They should do a movie together called He's Running, I'm Wet. I'm the youngest in my family. Most comedians are the youngest in their family. It's an attention thing. The youngest child needs the most attention. Think about your own families, okay? Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because mom and dad never planned on having their youngest child, that's why. <laughs> mom got drunk on New Year's Eve and dad took her to Pound Town. That's how the youngest child happens. <laughs> and I hate saying that and I look at parents and they nod or they clap. That makes me feel like <laughs> about myself, okay? <laughs> Clap your hands for the youngest in your family. We're the youngest in the families. I love you. I support you. I love you. I'm sorry I made fun of you earlier. I support you. We gotta stick together, young. We're the oldest. Clap your hands for the oldest in your family. Yeah. This guy, yup, of course. Not surprised. Yep. You don't know this oldest. There's a universal nickname that the youngest calls the oldest. We call you guys ass. You're an ass, sir. You are an ass. My point is that I hate New York. It's the only city I've lived in where I see a pill on the sidewalk and I'll pick it up and swallow it. I don't know what I'm gonna feel, but it's gotta be better than this shitty reality. What the fuck are we doing here? Everybody hates it. Everybody hates living here. But we lie, don't we? We say we love it to defend our rent and our life decisions. Oh, I love New York. Number one lie, I love the energy. I love the energy. It's not energy, you idiots. It's panic. It's desperation. It's, it's poverty. It's working three jobs and trying to not get hit by a bus every time you step outside. Oh, but it's the city that never sleeps. Yeah, and that does explain why everybody's such a fucking asshole all the time. <laughs> Maybe we should go to bed. <laughs> Anybody ever think of that? 
That should be New York slogan. Go to fucking bed, you guys. Jesus Christ. <laughs> every day, every day, I see grown men and women weeping in the streets. <laughs> Wet. <laughs> Don't look at your phone when you're walking. Look around. You will see a grown man crying in the streets of Manhattan. That's not the greatest city in the world. I've been a lot of places. People aren't crying in the streets of Sydney, Australia, or Ann Arbor, Michigan, where I'm from. Yeah, you cry there, you cry there, but you go home, don't you? You can't do that here. You got nine roommates in your one bedroom apartment. You can't cry in front of them every day. They'll call you a pussy every day. You can't even cry in the shower. Two people are showering at the same time to save time and money and energy. The only good thing about living in New York City is that once I got used to how expensive it was now when I go other places, I feel like a Saudi prince, you know what I mean? I was in Kansas City, I ordered two margaritas. The guy will be like, that'll be 9.75. And I was like, I want 500 margaritas. I am the Saudi prince of Kansas City. <laughs> Give me my change, I wanna buy a lake house with it. I live in Los Angeles now. Women are high maintenance in Los Angeles. Oh my God, big time high maintenance. Michigan, they were low maintenance. I went on a date recently in LA, okay? Took her to a steakhouse, all right? That's the way Costa rolls on his dates, steakhouse. <laughs> I don't take my date to some bull free TV taping that takes nine hours. Steakhouse, steakhouse, steak, steakhouse, steakhouse. Typical high-maintenance Los Angeles woman as I was valeting my Honda Civic. You know what she says to me? She goes, Michael, I forgot to tell you, I'm a vegan. I'm a vegan. I'm from Michigan. I don't know what the hell that meant. <laughs> to Google it on my phone. Apparently being a vegan means you don't eat anything at a restaurant or on a menu or that's convenient. <laughs> Madam a gentleman. I respect all ladies, I respect all personal decisions, so I did what any nice gentleman would do. I drove to a very nice vegan restaurant, okay? I dropped her off, I went back to the steakhouse. <laughs> I'm from Michigan! We eat steak there! I ended up sleeping with that vegan lady. Sex with the vegan lady, thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> Just for fun, I used a lambskin condom. Give me some right there. <laughs> I got a 5 a.m. flight in three weeks, and I, I, I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, it gets in your head, doesn't it? My friends wanted to get drunk tonight, and I was like, I better not. I got this 5 a.m. flight in three weeks, and I know it's coming, but you're never ready. You're never ready for a 5 a.m. flight. I'll sleep like eight minutes, you know. I'll pack drunk. You ever pack drunk? It's the best. Because you land and you see your bag and you're like, what is in this bag? What is this surprise box that I sent to myself from the past? Oh my God, I got nine t-shirts and a snorkel mask. That's great. I'm in Kansas City in February. We talk shit about millennials, you know? We say you're soft. Because you are, you're pussies, but. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. We're hard on you, but it's not your fault. It's your parents' fault. It's Patrick's parents' fault. Helicopter parents, what do we expect was gonna happen? Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Don't do that, I'll protect you, don't do that, I'll protect you. I didn't have that shit. Yeah, I live with my parents now, but I didn't have that as a kid. <laughs> When I was a kid, my brother Todd and I used to play baseball in our basement, but instead of using a baseball, we used these old metal darts <laughs> that I found next to the gasoline. <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> whipping gasoline darts at my brother. <laughs> for hours, unsupervised, dipping them in the gas. <laughs> and Todd liked to crowd the plate, so now I gotta throw high heat metal gas darts past my brother's face. 
Then one of them caught him late, stuck right in his eyeball, and I run upstairs, dad, dad, dad. Todd has a fucking dart in his eye right now. You know what my dad says? Wake me if it becomes an emergency. That's what my dad says. I have the worst agent. I have the worst fucking agent. I'm sure he already left. Doesn't matter. I can do the joke. Dan Spector at WME Entertainment. Do you know him? Dan Spector. His email is d at com. They called me. I answered. His assistant goes, can you hold for Dan? I'm now on hold. They called me. I'm holding. I'm holding. They called me. I'm holding. I'm the one who's holding. They called me. I was available. Now I'm holding. I'm the one who's on hold. Who's holding? I'm the one who's holding. Okay? And like an asshole, I held. And she comes back 10 minutes later. Michael, who are you holding for? I'm holding for Dan. I'm sorry, he's not available right now. You fucking called me! So last time I, I met with my agent, Dan Spector, I took all his business cards, okay? He had like 180 business cards on his desk. I took them all. Here's my favorite part about LA. Karaoke. People take it seriously here. They think it's an audition. They think they're gonna be discovered that night after that song. Here's how people in real America do karaoke. You get blackout drunk, you sing your favorite Journey song, and then you drive home as fast as you can, okay? That's how everyone else does karaoke in the United States, but not in LA, choreographed dance moves, you know? They pass out headshots afterwards, what? So I go to karaoke in LA and I put on my nicest suit, and I bring my agent's business cards with me. <laughs> and after a really terrible but committed performance, I go up to that person and I say, you listen to me, goddammit. I am a talent agent, and I believe you are gonna be a star. And then I slide in one of Dan Spector's business cards. You call me tomorrow. And if I don't call you back, you call me 10,000 more times. Stop by my office. And I circle the address. Send me packages. Show me you have what it takes.